when starting investing on property, I guess the biggest hurdle aside from the you know, a lot of information out there, the different strategies, now comes down to what is it that you're actually buying it for? Like, are you buying it for a capital gain, a big lump sum later on, or are you looking at for a cash flow? I purchased my investment property I thought it would be for a capital gain, but it turned out to be for cash flow due to circumstances that change in my life. So when you look at um, in in a cash flow perspective, it's a massive different mind shift. You don't look at the property based on what it looked like. You don't look at the property based on um, the finishing touches, the you know tap fittings, the marble bench top any of those you look at the property based on numbers in terms of how much money is it going to um, provide me income wise week in week out you don't look at locations you don't look at uh, most of those things i don't really look at it i look at it in terms of cash flow perspective side of it so i'll give you an example yeah so one of the property that i have my outgoing on that property, let's say $500. Um, that is one, your mortgage repayment, your your, your council rate, um, your water bill, um, what else is that? Um, insurance, everything. Everything everything that you can think of as an outgoing. So that would mean $500 per week. And however, I can generate $700 per week income from that property. So that means my, my surplus cash flow would be at $200 per week. So in a sense, I don't look at the house based on the configuration, what it looked like. I look at it after all of the expenses, after all figuring out your after all you figure out your deposit first of all to acquire the property buying the property how much is it gonna be costing um, I guess after all the outgoing how much is it gonna provide most most people uh, I guess a lot of advertising when I see when I see on uh, online let's say they say go oh rental income of X amount of dollars per week like it's all irrelevant and depending on what the cash flow look like on the financing side of it so if if they say like this is great for investment um, which is mo most of the advertising out there great investment um, tenants gonna be uh, willing to stay uh, rental income let's say $300 per week but it's all relevant if it's three hundred dollars per week is the rental income that's great but your financing side it works out to be that you have to pay to the bank four hundred dollars a week that doesn't make sense there's only so much you can squeeze on the tenant uh, to jack up the price a little bit maybe due to inflation but that's about it um it all irrelevant in the sense of that like if you're a minus on one property $100 and you keep on minusing each property $100, there's only so much that the bank will lend you coming from experience, that's one. Um, and there's only so much that you can take if you're earning from an, um, like a wage, let's say. There's only so much that your paycheck can provide you um, in terms of, I guess, how much can you service income let's say like let's say from your wage you're, you're earning about a thousand dollars and your property is costing you a hundred dollars so that means one hundred dollars of your wage per week goes towards the property there's only so much you can hold based on that um, mentality or based on that um, format of investing so that's why I don't understand when people buying a negatively gearing property um, where it's actually gonna cost people money. I don't get that. Like, I thought the idea of investing 
on properties to create a lifestyle to grab um, passive income to grab um, surplus income so for me it doesn't make sense like if you're buying I mean property is like the biggest purchase there is out there that I know of but if, if that vehicle if that um, I guess if, if that property is costing you money there's only so much there's only a, a, a short term let's say that you can hold it for before you decided this is not for me I want to sell it because it keeps you it keeps you working in a sense I mean don't get me wrong some people love working but I don't I don't like working I don't like the idea of me um, committed to a f like a full-time job let's say the idea of me obviously staying there for 40 hours a week and for you to go on vacation you need to get an approval and you can't go home before a certain time so that's not that's not the lifestyle that I want to have and if your property don't look look after itself in terms of financially like or, or, or at the very bare minimum is like break even after paying after after the, the the rental income coming in um, after all the expenses it should be neutrally um, look after itself then it's great but at the same time what would happen if let's say the tenant move out if the tenant move out you still have to pay all the outgoing go to charge like who else is gonna pay that um, and so it all comes down to that like how long at what point do you decide okay like if it's neutral it's great at least it's break even but if you are negatively gearing so if there was a tenant in the property and it's still costing you a hundred dollars per week and then if the tenant move out let's say the rental income at 300 and you are already still um, your repayment let's say 400 you're still out of pocket about $100 a week and then let's assume that the tenant move out for whatever reason so that mean you have to fork out $400 per week there is no room for you to have a slippage there's no room for you to you can't you, you will not be able to 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 have that property um, I guess vacant so when you have that problem then you ended up going I'm gonna discount my rental income. So instead of your $300 a week, you're looking for um, you know a tenant at $250 a week or something. So when you're discounting that, you, you think they say on it, oh, it's okay, it's only $50, but it accumul accumulate over time. When you're discounting it, and you ended up getting worse and worse, and then on top of that, what if there's a repairs? What if you lose your job? What, what, what if circumstances change and you have to pay um, more to to fix the property or so? Because believe me, that's what happened to me. Like the biggest nightmare that I had was that. <laughs> One, don't have a tenant. Two, even if I have a tenant, it was I'm still losing money. Three, uh, tenant move out, they ended up damaging the property. Um, what else after that um, so yeah there, there's a lot of scenarios that I went through um, through my journey on investing and sometimes it, it's it scares me that people out there still going through the the norm of oh yeah buy negatively gearing property oh yeah buying off the plan um, you know the buying I guess some people just buying it for the short term, short term gain. I look at it cash flow gain, a long term gain, and making sure that all of the property is actually positively gearing, and all of the outgoing um, doesn't belong to me. It belongs to my tenant, or if not the owner, um, my yeah, whoever's actually is living in there. <laughs> sense so so 
Yeah, I just looked at, in terms of property, I look at it in terms of the repayment. Am I gonna be minus on this transaction or am I gonna be a plus? These days, I don't touch any property that is gonna be minus. That I know for sure after all the numbers is gonna be minus is not a good deal. So I always look at a property that is gonna give you a plus if it's minimum alone, it's like plus $50 per week, minimum. If it's a minus for any reason, forget it. I won't even touch the deal. So don't try to convince yourself when it's, uh, when it's a minus is a good deal. Trust me, it's not. I'll see you guys later.